Welcome to the celebration of the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time at All Saints Parish. We just completed the parable discourse, and now for the next three Sundays, we'll be hearing a unity from the Gospel of Matthew about the faith in Jesus and on his uh, directed to his community and its future after his death. So we'll see those themes through these next three Sundays. We invite you as you are listening to this or watching this televised mass to participate as fully as you are able, to kneel if possible, stand where appropriate, and certainly to acclaim the responses. Uh, we also suggest that perhaps you light a candle in the space where you're watching this Mass to remind us all of the light of Christ that lights our way and warms our hearts. Thank you for joining us. again this week. Let me make the announcements I always make. You probably heard them, but just in case. During the corona pandemic, you are not required to attend Mass in church. We will continue to have this Mass recorded each week and posted on the web, the app, Facebook, and YouTube by Saturday, uh, at least by 3 or 4, somewhere in there. Uh, if you're over 65 or have a compromising health condition, we suggest that you stay home and be safe. This weekend we will have two in-person Masses, and every weekend for the foreseeable future. One will be on Saturday at 4 o'clock at St. Joseph Church, and the other at 10.30 on Sunday at St. Anthony Church. We ask that you wear a face mask and observe social distancing. We're also offering weekday Mass on Tuesday and Thursday at 9 o'clock here at St. Anthony Church, and so if you would like to attend Mass in person, but would like to be safe, safer, we suggest that you might observe your Sabbath on Tuesday or Thursday at 9, and uh, if you're available at that time. And I ask that you continue to pray for all of our parishioners, that we all stay healthy, that for all those, <coughs> excuse me, for all those who have coronavirus in their families, for those who are suffering, grieving the loss of a loved one, suffering loss of income, loss of job, dealing with hunger. Pray for everybody you can, that the Lord keep us all safe. Today our ministers are Tina Schutte is our musician, Leanne Hudson is our lector, our reader, Mike Wathen is our cameraman, and 
Peggy Epley is going to put it all together and uh, broadcast it for you. And I thank them all for their participation in this Mass. <clears throat> we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, the Lord asks that we see as he sees, to be able to look at the sufferings of others and do what we can to assist. Let's take a moment to reflect on how well we've been doing. <clears throat> Lord God, sometimes we come to the aid of those who need our assistance. Sometimes we're too absorbed with our own needs, our own wants, and so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your grace. King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You to God in the highest and on earth peace on earth peace to people of good will Amen Amen Let us pray Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer our prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So if you have your Bibles handy, I suggest that you open them up to the book of the prophet Isaiah. And we're looking at Isaiah chapter 55, beginning with verse 1. And the people are still in exile in Babylon, 
and they are not happy, but God does promise that they will be released before too long, and they will be able to eat wonderful food and drink fine drink as they once did in their homeland. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Lo, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hand of the Lord feeds us, he answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us, he answers all our needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate to all his works. The hand of the Lord feeds us, he answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Mm -hmm. The hand of the Lord feeds us, he answers all our needs. The Lord is just in his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us, he answers all our needs. The next reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, beginning with verse 35. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, beginning with verse 35. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, our distress, our persecution, our famine, our nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, 
nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. for today is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, and I just realized I don't have the citation here. It's from, anybody know where it's from? Anyhow, it's from the Gospel of Matthew, and it's about, you have it there? Thank you. Okay, it's from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, beginning with verse 4. Matthew 4, 4. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Now, when Jesus heard about the death of John the Baptist... He withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. When the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot, not on the water, but around the top of the lake, the north end. They followed him on foot from the towns. He went ashore and saw a great crowd already there, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place. And the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves, gave them to his disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. All ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let me tell you a little story. This is about a lady in France somewhere who had a painting, a painting on the wall in her kitchen. And it had been there for a long time. 
One day, a friend came for coffee, and they were sitting around the kitchen table, and the friend had some familiarity with art history. And the friend said, that's a very nice painting. I would suggest you take it to an appraiser and see what it's worth. And so she took it to an appraiser, and he told her, this is from the 13th century. It was done by an Italian painter, and it's called Christ Mocked. And you might want to put it up for auction. And so she decided to do that, and at the auction, the painting sold for $26.8 million. Now, the point of this is that it's a matter of perspective. She saw the painting, thought it was nice, but nothing special. The appraiser saw the painting and saw that it was of great value and very old and worth a lot. A matter of perspective. It's how we see things. And the idea of today's gospel is we need to see things as Jesus sees. There's another story about a lady who was teaching first grade in Toronto, Canada. She had kids from around the area, plus some refugee kids were in the class. And she was trying to teach them fractions. She was trying to teach them the difference between a quarter and a half. And after going through whatever teachers go through to teach these things, she thought she'd better figure out how well they had learned. So she gave them a little quiz. And she said, if I had a chocolate bar and I offered you some and I had it broken in pieces, would you rather have a quarter of a chocolate bar or a half? And most of the kids said, give me the half, give me the half, which is what I would have said. But some of the kids said, give me a quarter. And she thought she had failed in teaching them about fractions. But she thought, she thought she better ask them why they chose the quarter. And especially the refugee kids said, so that there would be more to share with others. They saw as Jesus sees. In today's gospel, we hear the story of Jesus has just heard of the death of John the Baptist, one of his mentors. He learned from him. And John the Baptist had been beheaded by Herod. And so this was his cousin. Jesus was grieved, and he went off in a boat to the other side of the lake to spend some time alone to try to deal with the death of John. The crowds pretty well knew <clears throat> where he was headed. And he ran, <clears throat> went around the north end of the lake, and the sailors who were sailing Jesus must have had poor wind that day because the crowd beat him to his location where he was going, to his landing spot. And when they got there, they presented their needs, and so Jesus, I might have been tempted to say, listen, I need some time before we do this. Just leave me alone for a while. But Jesus listened to their needs and took care of them. And when it was getting towards evening, the disciples said, why don't you send them where they can buy some food because they're getting hungry. And Jesus said, give them something to eat yourself. And they said, we only have five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. And the crowd was fed, as we know. So Jesus wants us to respond in like manner by taking care of those in need. And we say, oh, I can't do that. I don't have the time. Look at my schedule. And Jesus says, bring your schedule here to me. And we say, look at my bank account. I have not enough to do anything. And he says, bring your bank account here to me. And we say, I have all these feelings and I can't love that person. And he says, bring your feelings here to me. There's another little story. 
This is about Jessica Beckwith. She was getting ready to celebrate her ninth birthday. And she decided to give her birthday to others. So she arranged that all of her friends would make a gift to something called Charity Water. This organization provides safe drinking water for people in countries where they don't have the water, where they have to drink polluted water that makes them sick. It's a terrible situation. And so she went on social media and whatever, however kids communicate and said, make a gift to Charity Water. Her goal was $300. She raised $220, pretty good for a nine-year-old. But then tragically, she was in an automobile accident a few days later and was killed. But then the, new, the, the media, newspapers, and magazines, TV, social media, got a hold of her story and spread it around about how much she had given to Charity Water. And soon, lots of people took up the cause and were giving in her name to Charity Water. And as of last count, they had raised $1.3 million to bring safe drinking water to people who had none. This young lady saw as Jesus sees. She perceived what other people ignore. She saw the need of people who were hurting for clean water. Let's take a few moments to think about how we see. Do we see the needs of others? And what have we been doing lately to try to meet those needs? We believe that Jesus wants to continue his work of taking care of the poor through us. Let's profess our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. For our church, that our witness of Christ, love be real food that satisfies hearts searching for greater meaning, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our nation, as we struggle to respond to the great needs brought on by this epidemic, instill in us a compassionate spirit and inspire us to greater generosity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Be with those who have fallen ill with the virus and especially those who mourn the loss of loved ones. Grant them healing and lift them in spirit. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, hear our prayer. When confronted with the challenges and frustration that always accompanies doing good deeds, grant us the faith from which flows optimism and perseverance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who do not have enough to eat today, help us to satisfy their need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Amen. hear our prayer. For those who bear the cross of illness and those listed in our book of intentions, send them healing and strength of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Amen. hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Sylvia Goebel, Carol Whitmire, Nancy Knowles, and those we, rem we remember at this time, grant them everlasting peace and joy in the kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask that you hear these prayers and all the prayers in our hearts. Answer us as you see best. Help us accept your answer to our prayer. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we normally have our offertory where we return to God something of what he has given us. Let's get into that spirit of thankfulness for all of his gifts and see what we can offer him in return. Take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee. Take my moments and my days let them flow ceaseless praise take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee take my voice and let me sing always on for my king take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee take my silver and my gold not of mine would I withhold take my intellect and use every power as you choose And I will be ever only all for thee. Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the and Lord accept a sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, and, accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an, an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For out of compassion for our waywardness, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. 
And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. This is the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy and the people of God. Remember Sylvia Gable and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with St. Anthony, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Father's command, at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and, the and the glory are yours now and, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us hygienically offer some sign of peace to one another.
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my life. roof, but Lord, only say the word, Lord, and my soul shall be healed. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for us, make us worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. No mountain, no valley, nor gain or loss we know would keep us from your sickness, no secret, no chain is strong enough to keep us from your love, to keep us from your love. How high, how wide, no matter Healing is easy. 